Finding the draw on liquidity is the missing piece for a lot of ICT traders. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that on every single time frame. And here's exactly what you can expect in this video. Let's dive straight into it. The first thing that we need to uncover is where is price delivering from? Is it delivering from buy side liquidity? Or is it delivering from sell side liquidity? Once we have that, we need to identify where is price at right now. And then we can come up with an answer as to where is price delivering to, which is the draw on liquidity. That's the draw on liquidity part. Where is price delivering to? So if we take a look at this NASDAQ chart, we need to uncover where is price delivering from. So if we start off on a daily chart, you can see that price is below this daily sell side liquidity down here. So since it's below daily sell side liquidity, it would be delivering from daily sell stops. So when price reverses below an old low and then it starts to displace higher, that's smart money's footprints that they potentially bought from the sellers beneath the old lows because this is sell side liquidity beneath old lows. When price starts displacing higher, I want to see how does it react above these old highs in here. If we look on the weekly time frame, price has been in a sell program. What's a sell program? A sell program is when institutional order flow is bearish. So up close candles are acting as resistance. See how price is pulling up to up close candles, rejecting them, trading lower. See how it's respecting bearish PD rays. Here's a bearish fair value gap. See how it perfectly respects that. This is a bearish breaker block. See how it perfectly respects that. This is a nice little unicorn model. So since the weekly is in a sell program and bearish PD rays are being respected, when I go back Back into the four hour chart and price moves from the liquidity down here back into this internal range liquidity which would be this high right here I want to see what does price do above that so if a bearish setup shows up above this internal buy side liquidity I think it has a higher probability of playing out rather than it's just being a reversal here and starting the trend higher because the order flow has been bearish. It's proving to us that it's bearish on the higher time frame. So when I come in here, I want to see is there displacement above this high or is there a lack of displacement in that price area? Let's drop down into a one hour time frame and this old high becomes a little bit more clear. We can remove this daily fair value gap. What does price do above this old high? So I'm more interested in looking for a bearish setup since the weekly time frame is already bearish. Price already moved from daily sell side to internal buy side. Why is this internal liquidity? Well, because when you draw a range from this high up here down to this low, this buy side liquidity that I'm marking out in red right here is internal to that range from this high to this low. So that's why it's called internal range. This high would be external range because it's outside of that range. So where's price delivering from? Well, see how it moves up and just we see lack of displacement above the buy side liquidity. Those are signs to us that smart money potentially sold to the buyers above these highs. There's always going to be buy side liquidity above old highs. See how it rejects it and then starts to drop lower. Now we could drop down into a 15 minute time frame. And here I'm going to answer the question, where is price delivering from? So let's say you're watching price in this little red area right here. I would ask myself, where is price delivering from? What's well, delivering from the buy stops, which were resting above these highs right here. And what happened? It just displaced lower. So where is price at right now is the next question I'd ask. Well, it's in consolidation right here. It created a market structure shift lower. So this little red level is the market structure shift. What makes that market structure shift significant? Well, it needs a bearish fair value gap. So between this candle's high and this candle's low creates a bearish fair value gap. Now I have the framework for coming up with a target to the downside. Now I'm going to go over that I called this beforehand. So I'm not just being a hindsight ICT trader. I call these things real time. I'll show you that. Um, it creates the market structure shift lower with the bearish fair value gap. So it's delivering from the buy side. Price is in consolidation right here. So price is retesting the fair value gap. Where's price delivering to now? If smart money sold to the buyers above this high and they entered, and this is potentially just an area for a re-entry, where do they need to take price to exit that short position? Because they need to buy back from sellers and they're going to do that at a lower price. That's just, it's what's going to happen. They trade with way too much money. They need a counterparty to each transaction. So if they're buying, they need you to be selling. If they're selling, they need you to be buying. So where is there going to be willing or unwilling sellers? Well, beneath these lows. A lot of retail traders are looking at this as a falling wedge pattern, some bullish pattern of sort, maybe even just a strong level of support in here. 
retail traders that are going long, they're going to have stop losses beneath these lows. Breakout traders are also going to sell beneath those lows. So the market's going to get flooded with sell orders when these lows get taken out. So when smart money goes short up here, they're going to take it to the opposite side of the range so they could exit and buy back from sellers. So it's delivering from buy side. It's in consolidation. Let's say you're watching it in here. Where's price at right now? Well, it's retesting a fair value gap. It created a market structure shift. And most importantly, it created the fair value gap. So now we can come up with the answer. Where is price delivering to? It's going to deliver to the sell side liquidity beneath here so smart money can potentially exit. And if it does get heavy to the downside, meaning we see speed and velocity through these lows, then you can anticipate for it to trade down to this lower sell side. The logic behind that is, if price does not see lack of displacement beneath these lows right in here, and we just see speed beneath it, it's indicating that smart money did not want to buy back from the sellers beneath here, and they want more liquidity, and they're going to take it beneath here. That's how I look at it. So before anyone says it's easy to say that in hindsight, I did call this out in my Discord on October 25th at 8.36 a.m. So this is a lot of the things that I do in my Discord. I'll look for setups like this, and I tell you guys where I believe the draw on liquidity is. So if I see price consolidating in here, and it's retesting a bearish fair value gap, and I'm thinking, okay, there's a lot of engineered liquidity below. It's delivering from buy side delivering down, right? They're going to need to take it beneath the old lows. That's what I'll say in the discord. So I said the lows are too clean. That's my draw on liquidity. You could see price was in consolidation. See how there's all of this engineered liquidity in here. There's three lows relatively close to each other. When we have that and price is delivering from buy side and there's no engineered liquidity above, this is the clearest draw on liquidity for me because it's clearly delivering from the buy side it was failing to displace above that, and now it's just engineering liquidity. So this is smart money tipping its hand, saying, okay, we're just engineering more sell stops, so we have more liquidity when we take it beneath those lows. So in the Discord, I was looking for that. It said the lows are too clean. That's my draw on liquidity. You can see I created a nice little SMT. I shorted this on ES. I did not short it on the NASDAQ because it was the same idea on ES, but straight out of the open, it just ripped straight for the sell side. Now, back to this example over here. When price is at this internal range, how do we know if we're just going to start looking for long setups right beneath here? Well, what is the higher time frame narrative? The higher time frame narrative, if we zoom back out, is that the weekly time frame is bearish. So since the weekly time frame is bearish, right, when price is returning to these PD arrays and then it gets a bearish setup, it could potentially set new lows. So going back to the higher time frame in here, if we look on the daily, right, all price was doing was retesting this daily bearish fair value gap. When we drop down into the lower time frame, right, if it expands beneath these lows, these ones right here that are red, since the daily and the weekly is bearish, if it expands between these, it's likely to just head straight for the sell side lower and set a new low. So when we take a look at what it did beneath those lows, let me zoom this in for you guys. You see how it just completely expanded through that sell side right there? This is something I did post in the Discord. I said NQ looks like it once uh, 14,514. That was the sell side down here. The reason I'm thinking that is because smart money is tipping its hand saying, we don't want to buy from these sellers beneath here. We want the liquidity all the way back down here. So then price ended up expanding for that sell side liquidity low. So that was, there was some nice shorts in there. I do cover that in my Discord. I pretty much go over the draw on liquidity every single day unless it's like high impact news and it's low probability conditions. But if you guys are interested in that, I do also post educational videos. Make sure you check out the first link down below. There's a three day free trial if you just wanna pop in and check it out. Let's dive into the bullish example now, same idea. So on the weekly time frame for the NASDAQ in here, see how the institutional order flow is bullish. Price is returning to down close candles, it's respecting them and then trading higher. Bullish fair value gaps are getting respected. Okay, it's respecting bullish PD arrays while just expanding through bearish PD arrays. So when I see something like this, see how it disrespected this bearish fair value gap and went lower. Some people would say oh, it's starting to break bearish PD arrays. I look at this as it's just returning to the sell side liquidity right here. So in buy programs, when institutional order flow is bullish, which is when down close candles are acting as support, as we're seeing right here, and also bullish PD arrays are being respected, what also happens in those same buy programs is price returns below old lows for the purpose of stopping out 
long trades of retail. So you may be confused by that. Well, if retail is going long in here, right? They're always going to have stop losses beneath old lows. That's what the books teach us, right? Breakout traders are shorting beneath old lows. Long trades are getting stopped out below old lows. So there's going to be sellers. It's just, it's there's it's always going to work like that. It's never going to change because they'd have to brainwash everyone into believing something else, some other way of technical analysis. That's not going to happen. So there's always going to be liquidity beneath these levels. Price comes back down since it's in a buy program. Beneath these weekly sell side liquidity lows is where you're going to start hunting for a bullish setup. So the first thing you really need to identify is order flow. What is order flow on the higher time frame? Price returns back to the weekly sell side liquidity. If we drop down into a daily time frame now, I want to see a signature that would suggest for higher prices. So it doesn't always need to be you're buying this daily low in here. So see how price creates this market structure shift? see this very small imbalance in here as soon as i get that i have a bias what's my bias well price created this shift in market structure or change in order flow to the upside it created a bullish fair value gap and where is it delivering from it's delivering from the sell side liquidity beneath this low and this low and what is it done beneath it so it's delivered up so let's say you're viewing the chart right here let's say you're watching this live so I would say, okay, where's price delivering from? It's delivering from the sell stops. Since it reversed, it indicates the potential for smart money buying from those sellers. And if they're going to buy from them sellers, where are they going to take price up to? The exit liquidity. Above old highs is buy side liquidity. So if smart money gets long, right, they need to sell to buyers. So above these highs, it's going to be buyers above there, above this high, above this high. Because of breakout traders and because of short traders, that's where their stop losses are going to be. So because we have that, I'm looking at price right now. I'm saying, okay, it's delivering from the sell stops. Where's price at right now? It created a market structure shift, has a fair value gap, and also it's just retesting this bullish breaker block in here. So now my bias and my draw on liquidity is going to be these highs up in here. Because if smart money's long, that's where they're going to need to take it to exit. Remember, there always needs to be someone on the other side of their transaction and our transaction, but they trade with a lot more money, so they require more liquidity. Smart money, right? They're accumulating in this bullish breaker. So every single day until price reaches the buy side liquidity, I can look for a bullish power of three using midnight and open. Watch my recent video if you're confused on that. Also, what I could do is I can look for the bullish models to play out along the way. So until it reaches the buy side liquidity up in here, bullish models are going to work along the way up. So if we let this play out, you can see that it ends up taking out all of the buy side liquidity. So in short, what you need to do is just figure out where price is delivering from. Where is price at right now? Where is price delivering to? To answer those questions, where is price delivering from? It's delivering from these old lows and it's displaced higher. Where is price at right now? Well, if you're viewing it in here, it's just consolidating in a breaker block after displacing away from the sell stops. So where is price delivering to? It's going to need to take out the opposite side of the range for smart money to potentially exit and sell to buyers at a higher price. So that is exactly how you find the draw on liquidity. If you guys would like a video on going into the lower time frame and picking the right setups when you already do have a draw on liquidity, make sure you get this video, we'll say, to about 175 likes, and I will make a video on that. I'll catch you guys next time.